Welcome back to Pete's Dugout. This is episode number seven of my FIFA 23 career mobile Coventry City. And boy, have I got an episode for you today. We start the episode with some tough news as Bruce Shoulder FC strikes again. And O'Hare won't be fit in time for the Watford game. But as we take a look at the league table, the first game of today's episode sees first play and second in a really important promotion battle. And we knew before the game that a win would take us back to the top of the table. So Palmer comes in for the injured O'Hare and Ganelli gets a start at left wing today as we look to bounce back from the disappointing 3-3 draw with Birmingham last time out. Watford were quick out of the gates and they were first to launch an attack 8 minutes into the first half as Davis makes his way down the left wing. He plays a beautiful ball to find Kamara on the inverted run and there's absolutely nothing I can do as his cross finds a Spriller and it's 1-0 to the home side before we can even settle into the game. It's a terrible start from the Sky Blues as we go a goal down early on, but we did look to make amends on the 20-minute mark as Sheaf plays it long to Tavsan. Dabo goes on an overlap and drives into the box looking for an opening and tries to find Goyokarez in the box, but it's headed clear and we have to reset with Hamer. Sheaf passes to Canelli who takes aim from outside of the box and Backman sends it behind for a corner. A big chance there for Ganelli, but the resulting corner is sent in from Hamer and Goyokarez towers above the defender and heads it home to get us level in the game. I've created a lot of chances from corners over the last few games and we finally make one count in a game that we really can't afford to lose control over. So we're tied at one apiece and what have been a frantic start to the first half. Not much defending going on and both teams seemingly trying to outscore the opposition, but it's Coventry who attack again this time with Hamer wrong foot in Saar and taking off down the middle of the park. He sees Palmer in space and threads the pass through. Palmer shoots and Backman saves, but Goyokarez reacts quickest. The angle is tight, so he sends it back across goal, and Hamer is there to fire home with his first-time effort. Brilliant from Goyokarez to have the presence of mind to see the pass, find Hamer, and he does the rest. 2-1. So as we come back out from the half-time team talk, we look to do more of the same. 52 minutes in, we try a through ball to Goyokarez, but he's out-muscled by Cabasele. But Backman receives the back pass and makes a mess of the clearance upfield. Ganelli's chip is blocked but Sheaf is first to react and he slots in Hamer from distance and Backman makes an acrobatic save to make up for his earlier mistake. It wasn't all one way traffic though and Watford were still well and truly in this game. They win a throw in near our box and it's played into Kalu who turns and he hits the woodwork with a thumping effort. At first glance I thought Ronin got something on this but it cannons off the post and out for a goal kick. But Watford kept applying pressure in the second half when we looked really tired just past the hour mark with spaces appearing everywhere. Seymour opens his body for the shot, it's blocked but he takes aim again and it's in. I'm not sure if Ronin could see the shot there but it's straight down the middle of the goal and we're tied at 2-2. So after the goal we needed fresh legs badly and I wasted no time bringing on Edwards, Allen and Bapega for Panzo, Sheaf and Palmer. And Watford won a corner with 20 minutes to go and it's cleared as far as Allen. He shows tremendous composure at the back to keep possession and finds the open bid well. He releases Rose with a through ball and all of a sudden we break with Watford trying to scramble back. The ball is squeezed through to Ganelli and nobody was going to stop my pacey winger as he calmly bends it home to make it 3-2. What a goal from defence to attack in a matter of seconds and we take the lead again. Just a few minutes to play now and it was all hands on deck to keep the three points. Kalu makes his way into the box, slides it across to loser and Ronin gets down to make a fantastic save with his left arm. My Swedish shop stopper saves what would have been a sure goal. But from the resulting corner, the ball is played in and it's cleared to Ganelli. Backman was up for the corner and he starts sprinting back towards his net. Ganelli breaks into the Watford half, takes a look up and shoots from 40 yards. It's a race between man and ball and Backman somehow makes the save. That's incredible from the Watford number one and I can't believe what I've just seen. But thankfully there was no more time for Watford to get an equaliser and we hold on for an important three points away from home. We still have problems at the back with conceding goals but I'll take the win and that means we move back into top spot in the league. So next up we're back on the road against 8th place Luton at Kenilworth Road. But Pega comes back in at left wing, Blackman reclaims right back and O'Hare is back from his knock at Cam as we get underway looking to make it two wins on the bounce. So after some brilliant defensive work, Sheaf plays in Bapega down the left. He looks for Guayacarez between the lines who holds the ball up well. Slots into O'Hare whose right footed shot creeps just over the bar. So a positive start from the Sky Blues but Luton looked to counter at the 18 minute mark with an attack of their own. Cornick plays Berry into space down the left and he squares it to Adebayo. The forward plays a few fancy step overs. His shot is blocked but it falls back to Cornick through on goal and Ronin is quick off his line to bravely spread himself and save the shot. 
A brilliant save and Ronin is in brilliant form at the moment. A quick stop in action now as the ref produces a yellow card for an awful challenge by Lansbury. And we get back underway with Bapega winning the ball down the left from a loose pass. Guyacarez makes a first time pass to Tavzan who takes a great first touch and tries to lift it over the keeper but it's just over the bar and onto the top of the net. But we had the momentum now and looked to make the most of it with 10 minutes to go in the first half. Bapega is played in down the left and his first touch is sweet. He dinks it over to Guayacarez and he heads home from close range to make it 1-0. The weight of the cross was perfect and the keeper was in no man's land. A few minutes to go now before half time and I really wanted to make the most of the momentum and find a second goal to kill the game off. After some lovely passing from the back, the ball finds its way to the lively Bapega down the left again. He sorts his feet out and plays an inviting ball across the six yard box. The keeper doesn't come for it and Tavsan tries the bicycle kick and just misses the target. What a goal that would have been as we head down the tunnel, winning 1-0. Made one change at the break with Sheaf making way for Allen, simply down to fatigue because he'd had a good first half, but anyway, we get back underway in the second half with O'Hare avoiding the challenge from Lansbury, but the Luton man goes back for a second bite and what is he thinking? He's already been booked and it's a moment of madness, the referee having no choice but to produce a second yellow and Lucina down to 10 men inside the first minute of the second half. Despite us having the extra man, it was Luton who'd started the second half brighter. Adebayo is found in space and he plays a 1-2 with Mpanzo before the ball reaches Clark inside the box. He dribbles past Allen and puts it on a plate for Adebayo and the 10 men of Luton are level. Once again we fail to keep a clean sheet and we're back to square one. But I knew we had the talent and we also had the extra man so as we take a quick free kick, Guayacarez turns and sees Allen on his bike. The substitute paces forward, steadies himself and fires across goal to make it 2-1 and it's an immediate response from the Sky Blues. Talk about a super sub and a brilliant example of catching the defence out with a quick free kick. So I was looking for structure and composure but Tavsan plays a wayward pass that's cut out by Mpanzo. He plays it forward to Adebayo who creates space and out of nowhere he unleashes a shot from outside the box and the woodwork comes to the rescue. Tavsan is spared his blushes and we need to be careful. But Luton definitely weren't playing like they were a man down or a goal down and we were really hanging on in the second half. The ball is played into Bell who finds the run of Mpanzo. He strolls into the box and touch and drags a shot just past the outstretched arms of Ronin and thankfully just wide. But I was fuming at this point and I got my point across with four changes. Good and Palmer, Dabo and Edwards all come on to help us over the line and I was screaming for some composure on the ball. But Panzo gets robbed by Adebayo and he's free on goal with nobody near him. The fresh legs of Dabo try to chase him down and thankfully the Luton striker gets his shot wrong and Ronin's able to collect. So it's a huge sigh of relief as we hold on to the three points in a game we really didn't play well in. You'd never have known the Luton were down to 10 men and they'll feel hard done by not to walk away with a point. But as we get back to the office we really needed a pick me up. And that came in the shape of Kim Day Wan coming back from his injury. Boy did we need some good news and he is going to slot straight back into the team as we prepare to face 19th place Blackpool at home. So there he is sports fans and honestly that feels like a new sign in. Bapega did a really good job filling in but the youngster just really isn't ready to be starting week in week out. Definitely be in my thoughts though when we need an impact sub with pace alongside Ganelli but I'm happy we've got our starting winger back. But we kick things off with a glorious chance missed by O'Hare after he was picked out from the in swinging cross by Guayacarez. A smashing opportunity to get an early goal within the first few minutes. But Blackpool didn't look bothered at all. They win the ball back well and break quickly. The ball is squared to Medin who has time to take a touch and bury it near post to give the visitors a shock lead. I don't know if I need a change of formation or just to alter tactics but I'm conceding far too many goals and relying on Guayacarez to bail me out time and time again. I've tried a few different centre back pairings as well but Rose and Panzo for the most part have been good for me. Perhaps I'm being a bit too harsh and it was just a good Blackpool attack but anyway after Rose wins a header at the back we look to start an attack of our own with O'Hare. The ball is laid off to Sheaf who spots his midfield partner bursting through the back line. He takes a touch and smashes it past Maxwell to tie the game at 1-1. One thing I've definitely noticed in FIFA this year is the AI are so vulnerable after they've just scored a goal. So don't feel disheartened or rage if you go a goal down. Just try and keep your composure and you will get chances. Speaking of chances, Medine gets on the end of a cross from Hamilton and he gets so much power on the header but Ronin tips it behind. And what an important save that is just before half time to keep the score level. So Blackpool got us going in the second half and they look to carry on the momentum they built in the first period. Medine is involved once again and he's been the catalyst for all of their attacks in the first half. 
The ball is played down the right towards Carey and he drags it back to Medine who scores his second goal of the game. We really, really struggled to contain the Blackpool front man and he was getting whatever he wanted as the visitors take the lead once again. But just past the hour mark, we look to get a foot back in the game. Rose switches play to Tavsan and he plays it down the wing to Blackman. The American finds Hamer and it's off the post. Kim then hits the rebound towards goal and that's off the line. He's denied a goal in what would have been a perfect return to action. But we weren't done there. We recycle the clearance and Bidwells finds Goyakrez who plays it first time to Tavsan. He finds the back of the net and it's all square again at 2-2 with plenty of time to find a winner. Just over 10 minutes to go now as we win back possession and Hamer turns on a dime to start the attack. The Brazilian slots in Tavsan down the right who'd had a really lively game. He dinks it over to Goyakrez. His shot is blocked but Hamer is there on the rebound to steer home his second of the game. And we finally turn the game on its head to lead 3-2. Time for some subs and I went with some fresh legs to try and see out the game. Edwards, Eccles and Palmer come on. But with five minutes left we try to play out from the back. Bidwell attempts a dangerous pass and it's picked off. Blackpool swing across into Medine looking for his hat-trick and Ronin somehow gets down to push the powerful header behind for a corner. And from the resulting corner it's swung in and Anderson gets up to head home despite Bidwell's best efforts to keep it out. It's definitely a goal and as soon as we gave the ball away I just knew it was going to happen. It's such a gut punch after fighting our way back into the lead after trailing twice. So I made one more change with Ganelli coming on to replace Kim who had a really quiet return and we had one more chance to find a winner. Ganelli finds space through the middle of the park in stoppage time and he slots a beautiful pass through to Tavsan. The Dutch winger takes a touch but he stops short of the goal and the goalkeeper gets his position in spot on to easily push the ball behind to safety. So the final whistle blows and that's two points dropped against a struggling Blackpool team. The last two games have been a slight cause for concern but we remain top of the table with a four point gap but knowing that we have some really big fixtures coming up soon. But that's going to do it for another episode of FIFA 23 Career Mode on Pete's Dugout. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch my video. If you did like it, then please do drop a like and consider subscribing. I'm still working on that outro, but I'll be back with another episode very soon.